I'm Eric Goldberg, and I'm an animator and director at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Uh, I've worked on a lot of films and features in the past. Amongst them, I animated the genie in Aladdin, animated Phil in Hercules, uh, did two pieces for Fantasia 2000, uh, more recently animated Louis the Alligator in Princess and the Frog, uh, Minnie Maui in Moana, and it's my pleasure to talk to you today about drawing my good friend, and hopefully yours, Baloo the Bear. So, everybody pick up your pencils and let's draw. So we're going to start by drawing a circle. And you can see I'm going to be drawing very, very lightly here. Now practically every Disney character's head starts with a circle. It probably dates all the way back to Mickey Mouse. But really, when we're saying a circle, what we're really meaning is a sphere. So I'm going to divide it this way and this way. Okay, and I'm drawing lightly because I'm going to tie it down in the next phase. Now, I was always very daunted by drawing Baloo because his facial construction seemed so complicated. But when I went back to research him for a project I was working on, I found that the animators, and particularly Frank Thomas, went ahead and started with rounded shapes that made it a lot easier. So now I am drawing Baloo's muzzle, like so. Frank tended to draw the nose kind of rounded as well, but with a slight angle on it. Now, this line here, this is important because this is going to show you where to put his eyes. So we'll put one on this side and one on this side. Everybody with me so far? This is like a, a U underneath. This is like a triangular marshmallow with, <laughs> with curves. Now, to carry on, we're going to do the rest of his muzzle, and it actually comes up in front of that eye a little bit, and the middle of it crosses that center line. We're going to go ahead and give Baloo his cheeks, and it kind of angles like so, and like so, and that actually gives him kind of more of a smile. Now, continuing in our rounded phases. I'm going to make what looks like a slightly squared off U under here for his mouth. But that's his inside mouth. We have to draw his outer lip as well, which is practically parallel to that. Tapers out a little bit more up here. We'll draw his ear from this side and goes right about there on the circle. Okay. And we'll go ahead and draw the underside and the other side of the rest of his bottom muzzle. Now, we'll put a little bit of his body in here as well. Okay? So, I'm going to start with his neck, which actually has a bit of a break in it like so. And we can bring it out on the other side too. Now, his body is rather big. So I'm going to make a big shape here to indicate his body. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make that even bigger. There, this is what erasers are for. There we go. So, now, I'm going to go ahead and put on his chest color separation, as we call it in the biz, color separation. And this is like the center of his chest here. Now, Baloo has shoulders. So I'm going to go ahead and put these shoulders in, just so we know where the arm needs to come out from. So I'm doing a pretty straight line here with a break in it. 
to show that arm, we'll go ahead and we'll draw a rough paw, which is basically like an egg with a curved, you know, triangle on top of it. It will take form later, trust me. And we draw the outside of his paw. Okay, now we're going to make his arm coming down, and Baloo's got really, really big, thick arms. He's a bear, of course, so he would. Now, right now, it kind of looks like him, but now I'm going to do the stage that we call tie-down. We've got the rough construction for him, uh, but now we're going to add all the nuances that make him look like who he is. So, first of all, with this construction, one thing I noticed is that they would start by squaring off that end. Okay? They bring his head back here, and they would add hair to the top, which had the effect of kind of flattening his head. Now I'm going to put in some eyebrows here. One, two, and you can see I'm starting to go darker now. Now, he would also have a little bit of a cheek line there under his eye. And one thing that was very, very characteristic about Disney characters from this period in the 60s is that often they had eyes that had darker lashes on top and then the tiniest bit of eyelid over it. I think they felt it gave the character more personality. So if you really want to see him come alive, now we'll go ahead and put in his eyeballs. One thing that helps is not putting, is leaving a little bit of white space here before you draw this pupil. It just brings the pupils a little closer together and makes it more appealing. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tie down his hair, but it shouldn't look like it's it's stiff. You know, one of the great things that they discovered when they were working in this style is that they were using Xerox uh, to actually get the images from the pencil drawings onto the cells. So they liked it rough. Um, and that really freed them up to do a lot of different things. Now, I'm just tying down his muzzle, and you can see I put a little bump there. There's just a little bit of a break. And now I'm going to tie down his nose, and even though animators like Frank started with that round shape, what they would do for the final cleanup is put a plane over here and a plane over here. So you would be able to see that is a top plane and that's the front plane. Now, this Xerox thing that I'm talking about was great for Jungle Book because they could do fur. They could do great things with fur. I'm going to put a little middle line down there because from that line, we're just going to make a little bit of a bare lip here and bring this down. Put a little bit of a break in here and bring this up into that cheek line. We'll go ahead and tie down this line. If you want, you can put little pock marks in there. Now, on this side, we're not just going to make a straight line. He's got bushy hair that comes out. So we're just going to go a little bit outside that circle and give him the bushy hair. Now let's do his mouth, which, as I said, is slightly squared off. And even though Baloo's a bear and he has teeth, they don't tend to use his teeth very much for his dialogue animation, but when he opens his mouth wide enough, you can see it. So I'm going to put two little teeth down here, and then I'm going to put his 
tongue behind it. The teeth are kind of like curved candy corn, and then the tongue is like an angle here and an angle there. And if you want to be really clever, you can go ahead and shade in the dark part. Now, one reason I love Baloo is that when the Jungle Book came out, I was 12, 1967, and it fascinated me how beautiful this hand-drawn animation was and what a great, lovable character Baloo in particular was in that film. Now, let's do his ear. So, speaking of fur, we'll put a little fur around that. And as you can see, as I'm building this up, we really need to think of everything as three-dimensional. So here is the outside part of his ear, and in here is just hairs coming from inside the ear. Sometimes they would put a couple of lines underneath Baloo's chin just to show that, you know, he's opening his mouth and it's squishing his fur underneath. So now let's go ahead and resolve this, which has a little bit of a break in it. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side with the neck. My favorite Baloo animator happened to be Ollie Johnston, one of the great nine old men. And when I saw Bare Necessities for the first time, I was absolutely marveling at it. You know, uh, my wife Susan and I attended a lecture given by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston about 30, 40 years ago, actually. Uh, and they were showing Bare Necessities. And I'm watching... Baloo dance around, it's all Ollie Johnston's animation, and I'm thinking, it's just a pile of drawings. And so the character has always been inspirational for me. How do you accomplish such a likable, physically believable character as they did? You can see I'm really just hitting these lines here and darkening them up. Now, let's work on his paw. Okay, so this is actually the center of his paw, and you can put a little break in here to give it a little more construction, and maybe even a break in the middle. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put the rest of his paw around it. Now, he has four claws. One two, three, four. Your numbers may vary. As I was going through the film, I noticed that, oh, some scenes he has three claws, some scenes he has four. Generally speaking, if he's this close, he would have four. Notice I put in a little wrinkle there, again, just to make Baloo seem fleshy and believable. And as we tie this down, We'll put a little more fur around it, and we're going to tie down the other side. Now, I'm not actually going to draw this line. The line is there for us to know where his shoulder fits into his body. So now, I can go ahead and add fur. Often, they put more fur on the elbows than in other places. We can go ahead then and do the rest of his arm here and the rest of his arm there. And there we have it, our old pal Baloo. So thank you for drawing Baloo with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime in the future. Bye now.